not yet. Um, I've put a video together uh, which is a remake of a previous video I did on doing the fork seals. I wasn't too happy with the first uh, video. I think I glossed over it <coughs> a few things and um, I ended up uh, blowing another fork seal. Had to do it again so I've filmed it. Hopefully I've filled in the gaps for you. So thanks for watching. You can see the fork seal here is gone again. There's um, oil all over it. So I think it must have happened when I crashed the bike a few weeks ago, I had a big fall. Um, suspension got fully compressed and something's happened to that seal, but anyway, it needs replacing again. Now, I've taken the wheel off and I've removed the front mudguard. I don't need to show you how to take off the front mudguard, very simple. There's uh, two M6 uh, bolts there and um, another one here. So you just undo those three on each side and pull the mudguard off. And there's another video showing you how to remove the front wheel and how to put it back on again. Okay, my first step after removing the front wheel and removing the front mudguard is I just loosen the top clamp bolt with a 12 millimeter socket. Okay, second step is to wind back the preload, so right, wind it right off. So you're winding it anti-clockwise. Okay, next step is to loosen the cap. Now remember I have Olin's road and track cartridges and I've made up my own special tool uh, to be able to undo that cap. So it depends on what cartridges you have in your bike uh, as to how you undo that top cap. If it's standard um, Honda cartridges um, you just use a conventional um, uh, ring spanner or socket, I can't remember the size. So I'm just going to loosen this. enough just to get a half turn. Okay the next step is to undo the M8 bolt that's screwed into the bottom of the cartridge so you need a M8 hex key. Uh, you need an extended length because you need to push it through the hole in the bottom and then into the head of the bolt. It's not done up very tightly, just have to loosen that. And now I can take this out and oil should start running out. So that M8 bolt can't come out through the hole in the bottom, it'll just sit like that. Now we're back up to the top again and I can unscrew the cap. Okay, that's loose. And now I should be able to pull that cartridge out because the screw in the bottom is, uh, is completely disengaged. Next step is just with a screwdriver, just prise the dust cover out. Like that. So after pulling the seal down, there's a circlip inside here, which is quite easy to remove with a screwdriver. Might need a torch to see where the ends are. You can just get a screwdriver in and just pull it out like that. So there it is. And 
All we have to do now is you use this as a driver and a couple of sharp pulls will pull out the uh, seal and the bush. Like that. So there's three components there. There's a, um, the seal, the backing washer and then the bush. So what I'm doing now is I'm just clamping the bottom of this into my vise and I have aluminium jaws to, to protect the fork leg. You need to take off the top bushing here, it's got a split in it. So with a small screwdriver you can twist and expand it and then just slide it off the top like that. And this next bush, you can just slide that straight off. And slide the backing washer off. And slide the old seal off. Now I'll give this a, a clean with a bit of parts cleaner. I'm also going to spray some down the inside. This is a, an evaporating um, parts cleaner. Leaves no residue. Well, that fork leg looks okay. There's no nicks or scratches in it. So I'm not sure why the seal went. Now the first thing to do is to grab some insulation tape and we want to wrap the top of the tube here to protect the seal from those sharp edges. Now, you want to start at the bottom where these holes are, and it doesn't matter whether you wrap clockwise or anti-clockwise, but you want the overlap um, such that when you push the new seal on, it's not um, trying to climb over the edge of the electrical tape. Does that make sense? So. This is uh, going on the correct way. Now here's my new seal and what I like to do is get a bit of red rubber grease and put it on the inside. And the seal goes on with the open side upwards. Um, it's pretty easy to tell which way it goes. So. This should slide on nicely. Yep. That's good. Just slide straight on. And it should glide up and down there nice and freely. Now I can put my um, backing washer on. It goes like that. I'll take the tape off. First bush over. This is the um, this is the bush that goes uh, that's driven into the outer tube. So that just slides over, and then we've got the top bush that sits on the actual inner tube, and that just slides on and just just separated a little bit, and that will slide down and snap into this um, slot here. So that's all straightforward. I'm just spraying the upper tube here, the outer tube with um, this evaporated parts cleaner. Now I'm going to take the spring off the Olin's 30mm cartridge. So I need a 19mm open ender, which I slot in under the, the cap. And then a 14mm, and then you can undo the, the cap. Off. And I can pull this off and then take the spring out and the 
the preload tube. I'm only doing this so I can just pump the old oil out of the cartridge. I'm not going to pull the cartridge apart today. Now this is just a bush I made up that goes over the cartridge so I can clamp it into the vise without damaging it. So now that I've emptied that cartridge, um, we have to actually put it back into the bike as it is now. So that's with no spring, no preload tube. So I've got a fork seal driver here, this is a homemade one that I made on the little lathe I have, but you can buy them or you can use uh, PVC reticulation fittings that are of the appropriate outside diameter and inside diameter, just cut them in half so you can you know, put them around the tube like that. So. I gave some misinformation last time, I wasn't having a good day, but what, the, the, what you do is we put out a little bit of grease on the top, pushing there, slide it in, and then slide up the backing washer with that bush on top of it, and you drive the bush in first. I think that's, that's important. You know, I've just got my knee supporting the bottom of the uh, tube there. I'll put this around here. And then with a um, nylon hammer, I can tap that push into place. That's, uh, that's been driven home, that's good. So that won't fall out now. There's the backing washer. Okay, so now we're ready to drive the seal in. I find it best to put a little bit of silicon spray on the rubber. And just slide that up. Put my driver around the tube and then I should be able to tap that home just check with the torch to see if it's past the circular groove, yes it is. So you can see, yeah, you can see when it's uh, all the way home. And then with the big um, inner circlet, I can just push that in. And just get my little screwdriver and you should hear it snap into place. In, I'll just check. Yeah. And then get your dust seal and push that up and just tap it in. Okay, now I'm going to drop the cartridge back into the fork. And remember, no spring, no preload tube. So let's drop down to the bottom. 
I usually put a small amount of um, non-hardening sealant on the copper washer on the bottom there. Now with my 8mm hex key, I can just do that up finger tight. Maybe <clears throat> there's usually enough friction on the base there to be able to tighten this up as it is and it's not very tight you only have to do this up to 34 newton meters um, so what I've done is I've used an elastic strap here hooked it around the bottom of the fork leg just to hold it up as high as it can go so it's bottomed out and now we're going to put uh, the oil in I'm using I'm using five weight uh, five weight silk oil, oil and you want to put in about uh, around about 300 millilitres Put about 150 in. Now I'm just going to pump it up and down a bit. And also pump the <coughs> damper rod up and down. about 300 mils so that's uh, bled all the air out now I've pumped it up and down I've left it for a little while and this is not a bad idea, get yourself a plastic bottle with fairly stiff sides on it and have a hole in the top with a plastic tube in it and you can squeeze the sides of the bottle in to push the air out. I've got a cable tie set at 170 millimetres on the tube, I'll just push that down the side in the middle there and just let the bottle suck the excess out. Now you take the level from the top of the outer tube, not the inner tube, the outer tube. There you go. So that's set at 170 millimetres. Okay, here's the preload tube, so I can drop that in. Then I drop the spring in and put the spring in with the markings on the top. Yep, that's the right way. Now I've got my special tool here with a nut welder on the end that fits over the end of the damper rod. Um, so, as you can see, I'll put the spring retainer on first and then with the 19 millimetre open-ended spanner, I can pull that up, screw 
screw the cap back on. And this gets done up to 14 Newton metres. So the important thing now is to make sure you've got the full air spring inside the fork. So at the moment the O-ring hasn't seated because I've just dropped the fork down. But what you need to do is to pull or push on the bottom of the fork lead so that it's um, bottoming out or topping out. Because remember the damper cartridges have a top out spring which is actually pulling the fork leg back up about uh, 10 millimetres. So that's uh, pushing that down as far as it will go and I can just wind this in until the O-ring seals. Just tighten it up with my special tool. That's how you change a fork seal on your CVR 600, but it's pretty common for most bikes. So hopefully that's a little bit better than the previous video. I wasn't having a good day, so uh, anyway, I think I've explained it a bit better. So thanks for watching.